Nakakagulat daw ang mga pangalang idinadawit ni Kerwin Espinosa sa drug trade ayon kay Senator Manny Pacquiao. Matatandang nagpunta noon sa Camp Crame si Senator Pacquiao nang dalhin doon si Kerwin. Handa raw si Kerwin na humarap sa Senado at isiwalat ang pangalan ng mga sangkot umano sa droga. Gita man ni Senator Laila Dilima, ang pagtestigo ni Kerwin ay isa na namang paraan ng gobyerno para siya isiraan. Babala niya sa nakababatang Espinosa, huwag isiping maliligtas ang kanyang buhay kapag nakipagtulungan sa gobyerno. Malamang daw matutulad siya sa nangyari sa kanyang ama. Natingin din ni Dilima ay mangyayari din kay J.B. Sebastian. Pag-aaralan daw muna ng Department of Justice sa magiging salaysay ni Kerwin bago siya isailalim sa Witness Protection Program. Payo ni Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre II, mananatili muna sa UAE ang pamilya ni Kerwin para na rin sa kanila seguridad. Sabi naman ni DILG Secretary Ismael Sueno, beberipikahin pa nila ang mga tinukoy ni Kerwin na sangkot daw sa drug trade. Base raw kasi sa kanilang pagsusuri, posibleng politically motivated ito. Magi ang pagkakadawit umano ni Senator Laila De Lima na talakay. Isa na laysay ng hepe ng Albuera Police na si Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido ang kwento ni Espinosa at ng kanyang pamilya tungkol sa pag-uusap umano ni De Lima at Kerwin Espinosa sa Baguio. May picture pa nga raw ang pamilya kasama ang senadora pero tila ay pinagtanggol ng mga kapwa senador niya si De Lima. So alam mo yung picture, maraming ibig sabihin nun eh. Kasi kami, sana na sana kami, lalak lalakad lang kami dyan, may magpapapicture. Hindi kaya gano'n na nangyari kay Senator Dilima na nakita sila sa bar na nagkataong nasa Baguio si Senator Dilima. Nagpa-picture ngayon si na Kerwin. Pero base rin daw sa affidavit na isa pang anak na alkalde na si Kevin, nakasaad na walong milyong piso ang ibinigay na anak ni Espinosa sa Senadora. Nagsiya ang nag, uh, salaysay na ngayon, uh, 8 milyon ang minigay nung first magkita sila. And, So, meron din kapatid na Kevin. Yes, ma'am. So, that's aside from Kerwin. Yes, ma'am. Pareha sila rolan, ma'am. Ang ma madalas natin marinig yung Kerwin. Yes, ma'am. So, you, what you're telling us, it's, an it's another brother. It's a brother. Yes, ma'am. Kevin. Ma yes, ma'am. Saan daw binigay sa Burnham? Open yun, ah. Yung ano, sir, yung kay Kevin na sa Laysay, yung anak niya, maliban kay Mayor, doon na sa Dampa, specific yung restaurant, sa kay, sa kay Claire de la, de la Puente daw yung restaurant ng uh, your owner location? sa MUA. Nauna na itinanggi ni Delima na kilala niya ang mga Espinosa. My lead counsel, Dr. Guy Claudio, a prominent, a renowned psychologist whose uh, judicial affidavit is attached to the petition as one of the supporting evidence. Ang mag explain po mamaya tungkol dun sa ano exactly yung petition ng habeas data at bakit yun ang pinili naming course of action or remedy bilang pinakauna sa aming series of legal offensive na gagawin kontra kay uh, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, ICD Jokno po. At magsasalita rin po si uh, Dr. Guy dun sa kung ano yung kanyang opinion, kung ano yung assessment sa epekto ng mga ginagawa at yung mga pagmumura at pag-iinsulto, paninira ng aking dangal ng Pangulo. Nangyutita nyo na nga ho, mga sampol lang po yon. Marami pa siyang mga binitawang mga salita na sobrang bastos laban po sa akin. Napakalating bagay po para sa akin ang tumayo dito at makitang hindi ako nag-iisa. Marahil marami na namang kilay ang nakataas ngayon. Hayan na naman si Laila Delima. Nagpapapreskon at may bitbit pang petition sa Supreza a Korte Suprema ngayon at laban pa sa mahal na poong Duterte. Hindi na talaga marunong madala si Laila. Opo, wala nga talaga akong kadaladala. I am who I am and what I am, like it or not, is a fighter. Pero kung kilala niyo po ako at kung babalikan natin ang huling 
walot kalahating taong iginugugol, iginugol ko sa pagsisilbi sa bayan. At ilang dekada bago yon na ginugol ko naman bilang isang abogado. Sumasabak ako sa laban kapag alam kong mayroon akong pinaglalaban. Maiintindihan ko kung hindi naiintindihan ng karamihan kung ano ang legal basis ko sa pagsampa ng kasong ito laban kay Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Pero kagaya ng nasabi ko, ipapaliwanag ko yan ni Dean Jokno. Pero yan mismo ang punang hakbang para maintindihan ninyo kung saan ako nanggagalit. <coughs> ang sinampahan ko ng kaso ay si Rodrigo Roa Duterte, hindi ang Pangulo ng ating bansa. Nagkataon lamang na isa sa mga maskarang isinusuot ni Rodrigo Roa Duterte ay ang maskara ng pagkapangulo ng ating bansa. Si Rodrigo Roa Duterte ang aking sinampahan ng kaso dahil sa kahindik-hindik, karimari-marim at kasuklam-suklam ng mga bangat mga pananalita niya laban sa akin. Mga pananalita na walang kinalaman sa kanyang tungkulin bilang pangulo kahit napilit niyang ginagamit at sinasamantala ang posisyon niyan para maisakatapatuparan ang kanyang personal na pagnanasang parusahan ako. Make no mistake, my journey down the Duterte rabbit hole started not last August 2016, nung nag-umpisa siyang mga pagmumura niya sa akin ng katakot-takot, but actually it started seven years ago. Sabi ko nga, I blame former President Gloria Mahapagalaroyo. Bakit pa kasi niya ako inappoint na chairperson ng Commission on Human Rights noong 2008? Kung tutuusin, naririto po ako ngayon dahil siguro nakilala ni PGMA na makatutulong ang aking reputasyon bilang isang hard-hitting, no-nonsense female lawyer para mapatunayang seryoso yung pamahalaan niya noon na isaayos ang ating human rights record na noon ay binabatikos both locally and internationally, na katulad din po na nangyayari ngayon. Sa mga Pilipinong hindi nakakalimot, marahil natuntun nyo na EJ case din ang pinagsimulan ng lahat ng ito. Hindi ito mga EJ case na nagaganap ngayong taon, pero yung mga naganap nung halos isang dekadang panunungkulan ni PGMA. Hindi ba doon nga lumutang at sumikat ang isa sa kanyang mga general na pinansagan the butcher, si Jovito Palpalaro Jr. At noon din umalingaw-ngaw sa buong mundo, kabilang na sa bulwagan ng United Nations, ang tinatawag na Davao Death Squad. Hindi ko po inimbento yan. Hindi pa po ako lingkod bayan, DDS na ang DDS. In fact, maybe you can say that I became a public servant precisely because of the acts attributed to the butcher, the DDS, and the like. Dahil tatlong linggo mat matapos lumabas ang Philippine Mission Report ng UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Summary or Arbitrary Executions na si Philip Alston, isa rin po sa mga pinakabukuritong tao ni Duterte, ay inappoint po ako ni PGMA bilang CHR chairperson. Some say she had the good sense to know that she needed a person who had the reputation for integrity and the track record that could credibly improve our government's human rights record. Perhaps what she didn't fully realize was that I am no one's window dressing. Hindi po ako palabuti lamang. If you appoint me to a post, I will execute the duties of that office to the best of my ability without fear or favor. At doon po nagtagpo ang landas namin ni Rodrigo Roa Duterte. The rest is, as you know, history. For me, It meant a public service record that saw me tangled with powerful, influential, and wealthy people. I made powerful enemies and aided by their agents because I cannot do anything less than what my duties demanded. Cowardice was not a luxury I have the time nor the stomach to indulge in. 2016 comes and here I am, a senator, again calling for an investigation into the spate of EJ case taking place in our homes and in our streets. In terms of performing my duties, I am who I always have been. And there is Rodrigo Roa Duterte, a man who rose to power and 
Instead of seeing the opportunity to make the Philippines a truly better place for his people, his children decided that he would use that to get back at me for the sins he thinks I committed against him and against those who helped him win the election. He started doing to me slowly what was done to victims of extrajudicial killings. He was killing me. Sabi nga niya, uh, yung kinanta pa nga niya yun eh. Yung uh, killing, me killing me softly. He was killing me. Not even figuratively, but literally. He even admitted it. He wanted to drive me to suicide. He had imposed his own brand of death penalty by bullying through the misuse, abuse, and exploitation of the power of the office of the president and the might of the executive branch with the complicity of certain members of Congress and professional trolls and bullies. And he himself was executing it. Bertugo. It's a pushang Bertugo. For the last few months, I faced my executioner and his name is Rodrigo Roa Duterte. And for a time, he succeeded. I admit I felt the pain he wanted to make me feel. I had the sleepless nights he wanted to me to suffer through. He wanted me to suffer through. I had doubts of ever finding vindication, the sense of hope, helplessness and hopelessness that he wanted to use as the poison that would finally kill me. I started to question whether there are still people who support me. I went through the period of isolation that he wanted to impose on me, or upon me. You would never know it, but it is actually possible pala to experience solitary confinement without physical locks and walls to keep you in. I felt the shame he wanted me to feel. I even avoided na yung mga gusto kong ginagawa, katulad ng video, okay? at uh, ballroom dancing. When I thought that there were actually ordinary people who believed all the awful names, lies, and curse words, the mga PIPI na yan, he used, to sto he used to stone me to death. Sinful woman that I was in his mind. I felt the urge to sink down to his level na parang baboy na nakalubog sa pusali at nakikipagbatuhan ng putik. It was tempting, I tell you. But I realized something. If I, can, if I can't go through all of this and still be alive, breathing, fighting, who's the lo real loser here? Who's the coward? Sino ang tunay na matibay? If I, if I allow myself to fight them at their own game, name calling, mudslinging, lying, using the hashtag invent more tactic the lie through your teeth until your wig falls off style of fighting or the guess if i'm serious or lying type of rhetoric where everything even god country and people's lives are punchlines to jokes who will keep fighting for the important issues everyone will forget about the victims their families the orphan children they will shut down the investigations. If I did that, everyone loses. And Rodrigo Roa Duterte, the man whose ego cannot endure even the slightest sting of apparent criticism, would have won. More importantly, kung papayag ako na gamitin laban sa akin ang aking pagkababae, parang tinulungan ko siyang patunayan na mahina ang mga kababaihan na ang babae ay dapat lumagay sa pinaglagyan sa kanya ng mga lalaki, na hindi siya pwedeng umalma, magalit at umangal dahil pag umangal siya, parang pinatunayan niya na bunga, bunga mera, pikon, balat sibuyas, makitid ang isip, walang sense of humor at walang sense ang mga babae. Na hindi sila maasahan sa mga seryoso at masaselang usapin dahil ang tunay na kagalang-galang na babae ay si Maria Clara. Ang tahimik na dalaga na noong dumanas ng, malaki, ng malaking dagok sa kanyang dignidad at pagkababae ay mas piniling magpakamatay kaysa labanan at ilantad ang lumabastangan sa kanya. 
ng kanyang tanging tungkulin, tungkulin ng isang babae, ay ang purihin at bigyan ng bulag, pipi, at binging pagsuporta ang mga lalaki. Doon ko po naisip, hindi po ako papayag. Hindi ko hahayang diktahan, nino man, babae man o lalaki, kung paano ko susukati ng aking sariling dignidad at pagkatao. I refuse to purchase a quiet existence by stroking the ego of any man. And that's the most important point here. I wish to stress that. The biggest sin is to use my womanhood to silence my humanity. To use a weapon meant to oppress, repress, and diminish women in order to perpetuate even greater human rights violations. I refuse to cower. I refuse to give in. Rodrigo Roa Duterte, you were right about one thing. Yes, I am a fighter. And this is me taking my stand, fighting. You call me a slut, a woman of the world. Yes, I am a woman. I am a strong woman who will not allow an insecure man to destroy her. I have nothing to apologize for or feel ashamed of because I have killed no one and I have not engaged in or benefited from any illegal activity. I have not made other people suffer out of personal grievance or malice. I have done my job and in so doing I have incurred the wrath of a former president, a former Senate president, and scores of other powerful, influential, and wealthy people, and I still say, I would have done it again. You cannot make me regret doing what I thought to be the right and just thing, given all the circumstances known to me. You cannot make me regret not turning blind, deaf, and mute in the face of corruption and cross violations of human rights. In defiance of you, and your brand crass of misogyny, which is at this moment poisoning the minds of our people, I will stand my ground. I am sick and tired of being a victim who is always on the defensive. I choose to stand up for myself. In so doing, I discovered there are people who will stand up for me and with me. People began to reach out and extend their helping hand when they saw that I was willing, able, and ready to be the mistress of my own fate. So this is my way of hitting two birds with one petition for writ of habeas data stone. First, I am here to exorcise my demon, or my demon. I am here to exorcise my demon. He wears a crown and sits on a throne now, but that should not shield him from being held responsible for launching a personal vendetta against one of his own citizens just to vindicate perceived personal slights his manhood suffered seven years ago. His lofty position should not be used to perpetuate his personal evil designs against one woman. Ang paglapit ko po sa Corte Suprema ang paraan ko para iwaksi ang demonyo pilit ginagawang bangungot ang buhay ko. Second, once and for all, gusto kong maintindihan ng mga tao na kahit nagtagpo ang landas at kapalaran namin ni Rodrigo Roa Duterte dahil sa EJ case noong 2009 at ngayong 2016, ang mga ginawa niyang panlilibak, pangiinsulto, panghihiya, Paninira sa akin ay hindi dapat magamit para ilihis ang atensyon mula sa mga nagaganap na patayan at paglabag sa mga karapatang pantao ng ating mga kapwa Pilipino. I have to deal with the first so that he would no longer be able to fool people by misdirecting their attention from the truly disturbing issues of constitutional and gravely moral proportions. He tried to strip me of my dignity and my humanity because I angered him and because he promised those who helped him attain his position that he will make sure that they can finally exact their own revenge against me. Well, I am about to anger him even more 
because I refused to give him and his cohorts the satisfaction. He would have to find another way to repay his debts to them because I am done giving them the satisfaction of seeing me helpless and out of my element. And how can I be out of my element? This is my element. This is a good fight. I have the right to fight it, so I am invoking my legal right to do so, even if I have to step into untested waters to do it. Maraming salamat po. Senator Laila de Lima files a writ of habeas data or habeas data versus Rodrigo Roa Duterte. She clarifies it's a case against Rodrigo Roa Duterte and not the president of the Philippines. She says this is a series of legal offensives against uh, Rodrigo Duterte. And she admits the words of uh, uh, President Rodrigo Duterte, the ones that he said.